We're going to look at microscopes and the history of microscopes and different types of microscopes. Now, microscopes were first developed in the late 16th century and then used in the 17th century to study um, the environment and to look at what was around in the environment. So people like Van Leeuwenhoek and Hoek um, looked at the environment and saw things that we hadn't seen before, um, like the cells in cork, for the case of Hook, or um, animalcules, or small animals, amoebas and the like, in pond water, that Van Leeuwenhoek saw. Up until then, um, people didn't know about cells. Over time, the light microscopes, which they used, were further developed to the type of microscope you use in lessons at the moment. Um, they have a reasonable resolution, they can magnify things about 400 times or up to a thousand with professional ones and you can see single cells and you can see things like nuclei. However they're not very good at magnifying things and other developments since then such as the electron microscope have allowed us to make much more detailed analysis of cells. An electron microscope fires a beam of electrons at a um, dead sample covered in gold and the electrons scatter off it, the scattering is um, absorbed and then this is um, captured. The other type of microscope we talk about is a confocal microscope. A confocal microscope um, gives a fluorescent image and can form a 3D image by a laser moving across a sample that has been stained by fluorescence. The reason um, electron microscopes can see smaller bits because electrons have a smaller wavelength than light. So a small bit, like the green P there, um, might be missed by the light and things won't scatter off it. However, when the electron hits it, it will um, scatter off it and then be visible. So prior to the electron microscope, we couldn't see things like mitochondria and ribosomes and chloroplasts. Um, with the electron microscope, we can, and which is why you now need to know about them.